Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fine tune your Floyd Rose or floating trim in five easy steps. Also, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you some products and some gear that makes Floyd Roses and floating trims just a lot easier to manage. So when you're starting out with a Floyd Rose or any floating locking trim, tuning it perfectly can be this is especially true when you're like experimenting with string gauges and different tunings. I remember when I was a young lad and I had to take one of the first trims I ever bought to Guitar Center to get fixed and adjusted for 50 freaking dollars. I just found out who Children of Bodom was and I wanted to like down tune my guitar to I think it was D and I couldn't figure it out because I didn't know how the tension worked on Floyd Rose. So I basically took it there for a guy to turn some screws and throw some new strings on. But now I've learned, and I'm here to pass that on to you. So once you figured out the tuning, the tension, and the string gauge you want to use, then you got to tune it right. And doing it the right way on a Floyd Rose or any floating system will really save you tons of time from having to retune and refine tune and save you from a big headache. So here we go. Step one preparation all right first things first you just got to make sure you have everything ready to go specifically you're gonna need a three millimeter allen key any type of standard tuner make sure you don't forget your guitar cord and the floating trim of your choice Floyd Rose or any of them today we're gonna be using an Ibanez edge bridge now before you even think about starting to tune this thing make sure your fine tuning screws are in a neutral position and what do I mean by that you really want to make sure that your fine tuning screws aren't screwed in too tight or too loose. That way you have room to adjust the pitch either to make it more sharp or more flat. Step two, tune the headstock. Like we said at the beginning of the video, before you do this, you need to make sure the balance and everything else on the trim is figured out. I have a couple videos about this. Check it out in the description. There should be a card one over here somewhere. Figuring out the tension takes into consideration the tuning, the string gauge, the relief of the neck, the spring tension, and all those other things. So make sure you got that figured out before you do any type of tuning. Just remember, when you're tightening the strings on the headstock, in a Floyd Rose, because it's floating and it's sharing tension between all the strings, when you tighten one string, it'll loosen another. You probably notice that every time you tune. Just know nothing's broken. You just have to keep doing that for like a million hours, and then it'll get tuned, okay? Just stick with it. Step three, lock in your nut. So once you've reached your desired tuning, go ahead and lock the nut. Make sure when you're locking the nut, you don't have your hands on the string or your arms resting on the trim, because then you'll lock the trim in a bad position. It'll be uh, sharp or flat. Please keep in mind that these nuts don't need to be tightened until you can't tighten them anymore. It doesn't take very much pressure to lock these strings in at the nut. In fact, if you cinch these things down, that's like a one-way ticket to strip screws. Trust me, I've done it a million times. This is why I recommend that everybody get titanium hardware for their trims. It's an easy, cheap way to upgrade any of your trims or nuts. And those can be found at FUTONE, description below. So after you have it all locked in, you're ready to go to the fine tuning phase. So number four, the fine tuning screws. Bum, ba, da, da. So the fine tuning screws, they actually work on the saddles that the strings kind of tie into at the bridge. It manipulates those. If you can see, it kind of presses it down. These things are highly mobile and it affects the pitch of the string. Because the screws are so fine, it does these subtle changes to the pitch of the string, whereas the headstock, it's big global tuning changes. But like with the headstock tuning, you go through each string individually and tune it up. You'll see a little bit of the phenomenon of what you ha will happen to the headstock, where when you tighten one down, it loosens the other, but not to that degree. You should only have to really fine tune the strings for about like four revolutions. So right turn to sharpen it up and left turn to flatten it out. Once you've reached the perfect tuning and you can't tune it anymore, stop, you're good to hook. Step number five, readjusting. It's not uncommon to have a guitar with a Floyd Rose or floating trim that goes out of tune. What do I mean by this? When you first tune a Floyd Rose, the strings are new, generally. There's a lot of tension and a lot of things that need to settle, and that's okay. The strings need to stretch out and become conditioned to the environment and your playing style. It's totally normal to have to undo the locking nut re-tune with the headstock and then fine tune again. Trust me, after you do this a few more times with a new set of strings, your guitar will stay in tune the more times that you actually do it. All right, so now for the goodies. That'll help your Floyd Rose stay in tune and will save you probably a lot of work in the front end. First things first, I mentioned it already, titanium hardware for your locking nut and your Floyd Rose. The reason I recommend these is because they're extremely cheap. You can get them off Amazon. I get mine from FU Tone. For the amount of locking nut bolts that I've stripped, 
I would highly recommend getting these. Basically, it's the poor man's way to get a titanium trim, which are like $700. A set of nut bolts probably cost maybe $17, and then the ones that go on the trim probably cost you closer to 40. Next up, the Schaller Sure Claw. The Schaller Sure Claw is a really cool thing because what it does is it just screws into the back of your guitar, and it basically takes away the claw screws that you have, those big long screws that hold the claw. So when you wanna change your tuning, string gauge, anything like that, you turn the Allen key, and it will do what the screws do for the actual claw. It takes a lot of stress out of the claw, and then also it takes away the screwdriver, and you can even drill a hole through the cover of the back cavity, and then you have access to just adjust this on demand. And lastly, consider a Tremel No. I don't personally have one, but I've used one in the past. I've played a lot of guitars with them. So if you don't like how your trim floats, or you only want one that can do dive bombs, it doesn't come back to stay in tuning, the Tremel No can actually take away the trim, make the trim only dive, or allow it to do everything. So look into those. Those are relatively cheap, really easy to install. If you don't wanna mess with this, but you really love your guitar still, that's something you can do to modify your trim. So I hope you liked this video, I hope it helped. If you could help me out and subscribe, that'd really keep the channel going, so I can help out with these little tutorials, make some funny stuff, and um, keep this going. So I really appreciate it, thanks.